Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is week 5 of the 2015 season and I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst. Great to be here and great to cast this match, uh, which should be a fairly even match here between, on the blue side, Microsoft One, and that is O-N-E. Not the WN Microsoft game that we cast before earlier today. It is Microsoft the number one. Um, they will be playing for Charity Water. Charity Water <clears throat> is a um, charity that builds clean water infrastructure in parts of the world uh, that don't have it. So for the most part, um, third world uh, locations where uh, we see those iconic pictures of people walking for miles and miles just to get an equivalent of a bucket of water. Um, it's just so horribly inefficient for one thing, but also very inhumane. <laughs> that, that's the minor thing, the efficiency is the main problem there. Um, but, uh, so yeah, they, what they do is they uh, use the money earned or given to their charity, uh, and they go to those parts of the world and try to build uh, wells, try to build water filtration systems to try and uh, get more localized access to water throughout those parts of the world. So, fantastic charity there. Microsoft, of course, the company that made this lovely OS I'm running, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. And they are up against, on the red side, Amazon Hamazon. Uh, Amazon, uh, also, uh, something I can personally point to, this mic that I'm talking to you guys through, got it off Amazon. They are uh, an internet-based company that allows you to uh, shop for things online and get them sent directly to your home. Makes life a lot easier, particularly for someone like me who functions largely through the internet. Um, <laughs> and the charity that they are playing for is Child's Play. Child's Play uh, is a charity that brings children who are in domestic violence shelters uh, and hospitals in general. Um, tries to bring them the gift of gaming. Uh, something that we, um, as gamers, all can appreciate is how gaming sort of gets us in touch with a more... Uh, youthful spirit, I suppose you would say. It gets us in touch with a part of us that's more free and uh, engaged and having fun. And when you go through something traumatic like those children have, uh, it can be hard to get back into that state of mind. So a great charity there that tries to work with a lot of the uh, kids who emotionally are the most needy um, and try and bring them the aid they need. So without further ado, let's take a look at this pick band phase where you see uh, bands coming out from the uh, blue side are Rek'Sai, Singed, and Anivia. Um, obviously you're going to have that Singed be a uh, target band. Um, the, uh, uh, god I don't know how to pronounce these names, but the Y tile <laughs> um, likes to break out that Singed every once in a while. Uh, Typically does go more for the rumble from what I've seen than the singe, but that is an ace up their sleeve. So pro possibly instead of uh, also banding out the rumble, they feel a rumble's a much more standard champion, and they just don't want anything wild with the singe. So taking out the wild card there, um, of course Rek'Sai, just an all-around very strong champ right now. And as we uh, look over to the blue side here, or excuse me, to the red side, the their bands are Pantheon, Cassadin, and Jax. Uh, Jax is a targeted ban as well at uh, the beautiful first pick chain uh, uh, summoner we have I I'm not sure um, but uh, that is one of his main uh, champions uh, to break out alongside that Cassidy which is also another ban um, Pantheon uh, from my scouting I have not seen uh, much Pantheon from this uh, blue team here so I will be um, a little curious as to what that Pantheon is, perhaps they've done a little bit better scouting in Microsoft One than I have, um, always possible, uh, but also just not that bad of a band. Pantheon um, brings a lot of CC for someone who has the damage he has, so all around a very solid band. Uh, speaking to uh, the, the uh, bottom lane here, of course we see that Callista being picked up uh, with that Janna. Janna is a favorite pick here uh, for uh, Silent J. Um, so he will be getting that champ, comfort champ, locked in there um, with Callista. Of course, throwing that shield on Callista for that bonus AD once you have the rune on is insane. So <laughs> definitely a good uh, combination pick there. Uh, looking over to the red side, we do see uh, the Tristana uh, Morgana picked up here. 
Uh, Tristana is um, the new Tristana that we do have where she does have the ability that charges up and then detonates after a period of time. Um, so I will be interested to see what this Tristana play will be like. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much Tristana has changed um, since that re minor rework. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how she's played here. Um, J4, of course, being taken over by the blue side uh, just implies a threat of a Narvin. <laughs> it just it just does. Um, so uh, I would not have been uh, too surprised to see that Nar taken away, but it looks like they're going to actually lock in the rumble here. Um, as I was saying earlier, with that Singe Vandal, the rumble, probably the most likely uh, comfort pick here for the top laner. Um, so they are, in fact, going to lock that in. And that will leave the Nar up uh, for the infamous Narvin combo, but certainly a lot more things you can do than just put Nar with the Jarvan. <laughs> we will see. Looks like right now, um, Jarvan, of course, going to be a bit of a front line, and uh, with that Janna ultimate and the Janna shield, uh, they will have some degree of tankiness here. The Ezreal hover, very interesting. Um, they will have some degree of tankiness here, um, with that strong disengage that Janna provides to where if they didn't want to go with someone too tank heavy in the top lane they wanted to go with somebody a bit more damagey flavor that would certainly be possible but it looks like the Maokai hover is going to be what they end up going with here um, if they do choose to lock that in but perhaps more importantly we might be seeing a blue Ezreal here coming out in the mid and it looks like no LeBlanc at the last second ah you Microsoft one <laughs> Um, okay, so a little bit more standard. I was actually going to say it seems um, a, a little strange to be running Ezreal, even if it is blue Ezreal, um, given how much AD is already out here. Um, even blue Ezreal brings a lot of mixed damage, uh, and Maokai is not going to be enough to really force a lot of itemization against AP. So they are going to go with a nice raw AP mage in the middle lane, um, or I should say assassin, given that it's LeBlanc. <laughs> um, so... Uh, we will see a lot of mixed damage here. The good, some good CC potential, of course, brought by LeBlanc with those chains um, that she can throw out and also duplicate with her ultimate. Um, so combining that with the Maokai uh, Twisted Advance, um, the Maokai's uh, temporary knockback, should be uh, enough CC get, adding to what CC they already had to give them a strong, well-rounded composition here. As we see, it's actually going to be Annie locked in, so that might be an Annie support with the Morgana mid. Uh, we'll see how these uh, picks and bans get swapped around. I've been seeing, personally, I'm a stronger fan of Annie in the middle lane uh, than support, I believe. People underestimate the amount of damage output she has if you go, even with the item that's now deleted for good. Um, I believe Annie still has an insane amount of burst. Um, so certainly a good answer as well to LeBlanc, who will be looking to hop in, hop out, get some damage in, get some damage out. <laughs> um, and try and blow up Annie, that's stun. Well, I mean, as soon as LeBlanc comes in range, um, to even, just for a second, to start throwing down those chains um, after she jumps in, you get stunned, you get locked down. Um, and the best part about Annie is you can have a, uh, you can just use your W when she does that. You don't have to go on with the Tibbers. You can start with the W, and then if you actually do land the stun, if she doesn't do some sort of sneaky juke, um, you will be able to uh, slam down that Tibbers right on top of her while she sits there and is stunned and dies, given how squishy LeBlanc is. So uh, it looks like it will, in fact, be that Annie mid um, going up against this, Blanc, uh, this LeBlanc, and they were, will both be bringing with them Ignite. So that should be a deliciously bloody lane. Oh, I'm so excited for that. I don't, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but oh, I'm so ready for this lane. Going to be fantastic here. Um, looking overall at the rest of the team, I, I for this red side, I would assume that that will be a full utility Morgana. Um, despite the fact that most Morganas uh, almost unanimously uh, go for that Zonia's, um, since there's going to be a rumble in the top lane, since there's going to be a, what I assume is a just total glass cannon Annie in the mid lane, um, this Morgana might even skip out on going for that, um, excuse me, that Zoni's Hourglass, uh, and she might just go raw utility items, um, to try and, uh, keep 
the squishier uh, Tristana uh, alive here is uh, after the first item, the jungle item, and possibly a second item uh, is completed for Vi, she's going to be transitioning to tank as well. So um, almost all of the AD damage that's going to be brought into this game is going to be brought in through Tristana, who um, as she scales up into the late game will become more and more of a threat. So as it becomes more and more relevant, once we do have the itemization occurring towards those AP um, threats, Tristana will be able to punish that in the late game. So probably would be best to see um, a full utility build onto this Morgana. That way she can protect that Tristana in the late game to make sure that she is able to bring out that mixed damage um, and not allow for just a pure itemization against uh, this AP threat that they do have with the Annie, with the... Uh, rumble and with if she didn't go a raw utility with the morgana as well um looking over conversely to the blue side here to this microsoft team we do see uh a lot of tankiness brought in with that maokai with that j4 very both ha both have very strong engage i should say um so with the high mobility of uh leblanc obviously able to jump in but also Callista, who is able to just move so fluidly, even as she uh, just like does her little kite jump um, towards whatever target, that will be allowing her to get really good positioning throughout these fights. So even if J4 and Malka jump in a little bit more aggressively uh, than they normally should, I think it will actually be okay with this composition because LeBlanc will be able to get there in time, provide her damage. Callista sped up by the Janna passive especially, will be able to get there in time and kite around that fight uh, effectively. And with that Ren slow, uh, people all, obviously always focus on the damage from Ren because, oh, the damage is so good. <laughs> but um, something that is neglected somewhat frequently is uh, the actual slow that Ren provides. So uh, once she is taking out those Ren sacks to get kills, which Callista will inevitably do, um... She also provides a really soft CC for the rest of her team um, on the rest of her team that have any Ren stacks in her. So definitely keep an eye out uh, this game for how uh, Callista's uh, slow affects these people because this is going to be a very catch-oriented comp and a very split-you-up oriented comp and pick you apart piece by piece for the blue side. So if they're going to really try and execute that strategy... They're going to need to try and divide up the team and focus them down piece by piece here. And the best way to do that would be through this um, sort of Jarvan uh, Maokai engage where they uh, create barriers between the teams. Not just obviously Maokai uh, disabling some people on the back line, um, but also J4 physically creating that wall <laughs> with his ultimate. Um, that way they're not able to get in proper position here. So, as we get rolling into the game here, we do see uh, fairly standard item starts here. Uh, we see Maokai going with that flask. We see uh, Rumble going into him with those boots. Not necessarily any particular skill shots uh, trying to be dodged out here. Perhaps able to run away from some saplings, direct them into some minions a bit more. That's certainly not negligible with how frequently Maokai throws saplings. <laughs> but... Largely just a good start for this uh, Rumble, who's going to need to position himself uh, in the right spot to get those last hits. Not the easiest champion to last hit on. Annie a little late to the party here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. It looks like she does. She did start her W, but she actually uh, went a little, uh, stayed in base a little bit longer than she had to. Typically, uh, you'll see Annie's get two charges on that and then get the last two charges while they walk to lane here. Uh, that way they're able to, uh, if something does break out, they're there, they got the stun up. Um, they will have about half the mana they need, but unless if an engagement actually breaks out, typically, um, which does not happen, there we go, um, which does not happen typically, there's no real disadvantage to that, and even if something does break out, you only have one skill. <laughs> so um, that AoE stun will come out once. Uh, maybe you'll get another W, and then after some sort of bloody skirmish at level 1, you'd want to go back anyway. So, um, an interesting decision to hang out in base a little bit longer, um, but it looks like it's not going to affect them too bad, since uh, we will have standard starts here. Actually, Annie 
gonna go way deep and try and get that ward onto the red. So gonna cause a little uh, bit of concern here in the middle lane. Looks like she'll only miss out on one CS for it, if that, so. Not gonna be punished too hard for that, but they will have some great scouting information as to where everybody is. Seeing that that bottom lane was missing, perhaps uh, they wanted to get an eyes on that red buff to see uh, if there was some shenanigans going on, but no, it was just the Krug start from this bottom lane here uh, onto that Callista trying to get some early experience advantage here into this bottom lane. And overall, they were not punished for it. See, looking at that uh, CS, it's uh, directly even right now, so... A good decision there to get the more valuable uh, Krugs early, get that level 2 at the same time even though they were late to lane, and some good trades here back and forth, not too much damage going either direction right now, the shields coming out, protecting everybody. See LeBlanc um, jumping in, and that is uh, the danger of using that Q as Annie if you're trying to respond to that LeBlanc who jumped in. As we actually see... Uh, Vi gonna jump over here and take this red. She will be spotted out. Maybe I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I feel like that spotted her. Um, even so, that uh, was very unfortunate for J4, who did start. As we see, a lot of damage going to this handy. Jeez, um, she did start flash, so she'll actually be all right farming from distance using those abilities. But uh, definitely gonna continue to take quite a bit of harass here in this early game. Um, J4, who did uh, now just see this red is gone, um, unfortunately for him, and that his, only the uh, large Razor Beak is around, going to be painful for him. Um, after starting with that blue, he decided to go back before getting that red. Of course, he was not much of a decision, a little bit too low to hang around. As we see Vi trying to set up for something in this middle lane here. I'm going to try to keep us focused here as Annie baits this out, possibly. Um... But since J4 uh, was not able to, actually, I, I do not believe J4 knows that Vi is here. So this is going to be a very interesting flash here. And with the flash flag and drag actually missing, that opens it up for this red side here. And he just immediately leaving uh, after the engagement started there. And she got her uh, Q off onto LeBlanc. But overall, not too much. But a uh, free flash, essentially, from this J4, as we see... A lot of damage in this bottom lane, actually. Uh, gonna be able to get that with the Q? No, not going to be able to. So, Calista gonna be hopping around trying to get the damage, and she will. She came back a little bit too greedy, trying to finish off those kills, and gonna pay for it. The Janus shield barely protecting her from the minions. First blood onto Janna um, with the assist going over to Callista, of course. So, uh, not the worst things that could have happened from that engagement where it was actually very much a toss up there um, in that bottom lane both uh, support and AD carry for the blue side taken so low from that uh, essentially a toss up of how that could have gone from any uh, very like minor changes <laughs> in that battle uh, plan that went out there you see any throwing up that shield trying to block out as much damage as possible Doing her best to farm under turret. Annie, of course, not the best uh, champion to try and farm under turret with. Um, but LeBlanc, uh, actually, despite creating a lot of this pressure, does not have a CS lead right now. So, gonna try and get the kill of she, yes, with the ignite and the chain proc. That will be enough to get her in. Uh, unfortunately, Vi missing that Q as well is not even gonna be able to return a lot of damage. So, that's two kills now over to this blue side. Onto LeBlanc as well. Definitely not. What you wanted to see get going um, is a mid lane LeBlanc. That certainly is something that will cause a lot of headaches here if she can uh, try and snowball that into some more kills as the game goes on. Uh, those rums are so easy to do with that uh, jump that she has. A lot of damage going on to that rumble there and actually not much at all getting returned to Maokai. So uh, rumble probably going to have to go back right now uh, if the saplings don't stop him. And they actually will. Uh, as we see this fight going down in the bottom lane here. Some good spell thieves procs on both sides here. Of course, being that uh, form of support main as I was. Uh, and probably still am, really. Um, I, I just love watching those uh, spell thieves edges uh, just tick. 
down every time there's a single auto going in. Oh, the, yeah, that five gold. Oh, give it to me. <laughs> and we actually see, through my silliness, a lot of damage on her. If she can actually rend in range, that would be the kill, but unfortunately not going to be able to. Then it just barely survive in this bottom lane are both the uh, Janna and, or excuse me, uh, Morgana and Tristana here. And that will be, uh, what will, will be a growing CS lead. Annie actually gonna look to make her way down bottom, actually gonna think wiser of it. Um, seeing that, uh, Tristana is so low at this point. Can't even hang around, not only to defend her turret, but also, uh, just to try and take that CS as the turret goes down. As you see Rumble making his way back to this top lane now, full health here. Um, getting those ingredients for that, uh, actually getting, getting just destroyed here, thinking they have the upper hand and might still do so. Actually with the Ren, they're going to get the kill onto that Vi. Gutsy play from this blue side bottom lane. Oh, and with the stack now onto it, Tristana. I mean, how gutsy are they, though? It looks like they're going to think better. I mean, they're both hanging around right now. LeBlanc is here on a ward, so Tristana trying to bait that out and got a little bit more than she could chew there. Perhaps a little bit of tunnel vision not seeing uh, that LeBlanc on top of the ward here. Uh, going to give up her life with those chains. Unfortunately, uh, she did calculate that properly for the jump of the chains uh, additional range created the result we saw before us where uh, you're gonna end up going down to that and Tristana or excuse me Morgana wishing she could do something in this bottom lane with how low both of these champions are but unfortunately just not able to uh, even doesn't have the mana available to do so so J4 gonna miss that flag and drag again but the Tibbers actually misses oh it seems like the Tibbers only caught uh, the LeBlanc there and the stun was not prepared might have missed saw that, but it looked like uh, nobody slowed down there. So, unfortunate uh, play there for this Annie. And with that, I mean, that's two kills on a LeBlanc. That's all she needs to get started to start roaming around. Especially when overall you have a 5-0 uh, to oh, uh, kill advantage right now in this game overall. Good equalizer there to start this off. Cleaning up the minions as this gank goes down. And Maokai going to try and turn this around. Rumble actually going to be forced to flash there. And with J4 coming in, this Vine might have bit off a bit more than she can chew as well. With J4 going to throw the flag down. No, actually just going to Cataclysm for the sure thing. And one more auto, but that will be the kill going back to Rumble. So first kill of the game going over to the red side. But that is another two for one. Uh, in favor of this blue side here, and we already see a 3k deficit developed in favor of this blue side right now. So, um, as we position around, unfortunately, it uh, looks like the red side is not even able to try and answer with some sort of dragon as Vi just now getting out of her base. And that would be a very risky dragon at this point, but um, one of these, I mean, there's a lot of champions for this blue side that if they get going you're in, you're really not going to like what they got going um, of course LeBlanc infamous as a snowball champion here in the league but Callista being a new addition um, is not really feared uh, if rather I should say I suppose respected enough uh, with how much she can get out of control right now see Annie doing her best again to farm up that middle lane yeah, I mean, especially it appears um, that this Callista... Wow, that damage onto Annie from LeBlanc. A single combo there, taking out two-thirds of Annie's health. She's gonna have to uh, chug through those health spots, or that flask, I should say, if she's gonna want to stay in lane. And Rumble, with those empowered auto attacks, not trading poorly, but gonna have to run for cover behind those minions, and he will make it out in time. Very close uh, and good play by the Rumble there to get out just in the nick of time there, making sure he does not give up the kill onto this Maokai. 
We see good fancy feet here in the bottom lane, dancing out that Q from Morgana as we see the J4 coming in. The turret has fallen, and that Morgana does not have a way to get out, so she will flash, but it won't be enough. And with the Cataclysm, that will force another flash, and the smite, and the last... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if that was an auto attack. I believe that was just a rend once she jumped into range there. Uh, the combination between that and the smite going to be enough to take them down, and that's another... Three kills, including the rumble in the top lane, going over to this red side here. And we will jump back just a moment because I, I do believe that that rumble uh, should have gone away there. Unless if there was some sort of uh, minion. We'll watch this under his turret here, trying to farm up what he can. Oh, I see what happened. LeBlanc came. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And with that, did uh, did force her to use the ignite, I suppose, um, to secure that, uh, with how much uh, shield he was given. But unfortunately, that's not gonna be enough. Annie, oh, Annie, playing a little risky, walking into uh, now three zero and one LeBlanc. Not not necessarily the best decision there. Um, but unfortunately, LeBlanc gonna uh, be sent back to the fountain before she can take advantage of that. But we do see this blue side now. Uh, with the smite up on J4, with that heal coming in from Janna, with that hilarious animation as usual, the Ren Sex, um, not going to be enough uh, to finish that off timing wise, but she will get the last auto attack in, saving J4 that smite so he can go uh, smite a camp there and get a nice passive buff. And it looks like this uh, rotation to the mid lane turret will just get them a middle turret for free here, unfortunately. Uh, Poor timing for this red team. Everyone just now getting back to lane uh, was not able to defend that turret at all. And that will be uh, two turrets to nothing right now in favor of this blue side. LeBlanc spotting out that pink ward, getting a couple shots and going to ping it out on the minimap for everybody. Um, but not quite able to finish that off without too much of a risk. And I like that. I like that play. Despite being a fed LeBlanc, um, you do not hang out too long in the enemy jungle you don't try and do anything too crazy make too many plays just take a nice easy soft approach to the game continue to do your job continue to uh, burst down people when you get a clean shot and don't go uh, absolutely ham with it very good play there as you see Tristan I'm gonna clean up this pink ward in the bottom lane really quickly and LeBlanc finally making it Back up to clean out that pink ward. Going to be able to throw down some vision there. They will see that um, right on top of their ward as well. But Vi going to have to do something fancy here. I mean, that LeBlanc damage. That LeBlanc damage. It's too much. Vi probably should have. I mean, it's easy to say that as a caster. I, I don't know how much Vi was uh, paying attention to whether or not um, LeBlanc had her item breaks after her last back, but with that Morel and Omicron completed and those Sorcerer shoes completed, you do not want to mess with that LeBlanc at this stage in the game. So, um, unfortunately for Vi, uh, trying to set this up with her CC initially uh, was not able to finish off uh, that Vi or that LeBlanc and actually ended up going down, costing her own life. As we see that Callista jumping around, gonna force the rocket jump from that uh, Tristana. That does ping out seeing the J4 was in tow there. J4 actually way deep behind the enemy turret, gonna come in from behind, tank it up for the Callista, who with the summoner here, heal and the J4 flash will actually get that uh, kill without any problem at all. Making it look easy is this blue team right now. And LeBlanc coming in, getting damage on this uh, Morgana as we do see that Annie going down. Yes, with that last LeBlanc jump, that will be uh, the Annie going down as well with this turret. So overall, in the top lane commotion, that is a two for nothing with a turret. And absolutely, this game is out of control right now. A 10k lead at 15 minutes in. I mean... To put it in a way that's understandable, a bit more, like, tangibly, as we see Janna almost dying, taking one turret shot too many, um, half of the entire gold for this red team 
is the gold lead that the blue side has over them. That is an insane statement at any point in the game. And Vi gonna throw down that ultimate to make sure she will get a kill onto her. That's good. She definitely needs that. And with the uh, smite here, the chilling smite, I believe. Yeah, that's the chilling smite. Um, gonna be able to keep this Maokai hanging around. Good Q from that Morgana, landing that, um, not allowing him any chance to sidestep the other. So there's a good two kills onto this red side, which they desperately did need, and are going to continue to need here. Uh, if you're going to put kills uh, onto somebody right now, it's probably Vi who you need them on, as she will be uh, out of the rest of the team, probably the most mobile champion. You're going to need those kills around uh, where you can use them. And that Vi will be able to get into those good positions. J4 is hanging around so long, so studious in this, waiting as long as possible. Callista hanging out. And with the Cataclysm, no! Didn't get the last auto attack, thought the Cataclysm would be enough, but it was not. So Tristana making it out with sub 20 hit points. Oh, just unfortunate uh, choice there to try and get out of the uh, turret shot at one second sooner and not getting the last attack in from that auto and with that Tristana ultimate hanging around the disrespect onto this J4 a kill going onto this Annie uh, who does get the final kill with her Q there the grave play there uh, keeping that J4 interested so long actually uh, if he did not get queued by Morgana there he was going to try and flag and drag back into that uh, Tristana and Great ultimate there coming out from this Janna, and that is another kill onto this LeBlanc, who is now 6 0 and 1. And we're going to see just an outright dive here in this middle lane. Nothing that can be done. Uh, the equalizer thrown down. Uh, got a little bit of damage in there, but it's simply not enough at this point. Gosh, I mean. When, when you've got a 4-0-2 AD carry and a 6-0-2 LeBlanc, um, disregarding the entire rest of the team, who was all positive uh, substantially at this point, um, I cannot believe how much um, like this game has spiraled out of control. It is 18 minutes, and we're seeing those kinds of stats right now. So just absolutely painful to watch here. There's going to have to be some vision wars going down. I mean, we see the pink wards lay, laid down here for this red side. They've got some good defensive wards throughout their jungle. I, it's not like they're missing out on something. It's just when you're so far behind, you're going to have to rely on this Microsoft One team to make a mistake. And it doesn't seem like they've been making any mistakes all game. It seems like they've had very astute play throughout this whole game here. Certainly not perfect by any means, but nothing that can be taken advantage of here and the question only has been how much of an advantage can they press this microsoft team is just going insane the tibbers coming out actually did not land onto that Callista here not sure why that chat is showing up in client apologies for that anyone getting a little distracted by my friends just spamming my name. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, unfortunately that Tibber's uh, not landing onto that Callista there. Very unfortunate for that. And we do see um, Annie actually opting to go with the uh, cooldown reduction boots here. The boots of lucidity, I believe. Um, yes. So LeBlanc actually caught very deep here. They do know this LeBlanc is around. LeBlanc hanging out, sitting around. Waiting for those minions, and she will be able to jump to safety here. With that blue buff on her, she'll definitely make it out uh, in time here. As we see Callista uh, with Janna just able to take this. Well, f during that entire distraction that even caught me looking up here to see how LeBlanc was going to do it. Uh, Callista, meanwhile, being the 4-0 and 2 Callista she is, just annihilating that inner mid turret. And that is Maokai caught out, but Maokai definitely not the one you want to fight here. And we see with the 4-1, to one, not even going to risk LeBlanc being somewhere in the area. I'm going to just give that up here. So you see, actually catching her out. That is quite a bit of damage, and that will be Callista going down. That is some shutdown gold 
desperately needed onto this red side team here. Uh, great backing off there from the Morgana to actually get out with the blinking red health bar there. Not going to give it up. Uh, another kill that is to this LeBlanc. And that is, again, that shutdown gold from killing that Callista is absolutely critical for this team. They're going to need that gold to try and get back into this game somehow. Again, I, I'm not sure how, like, you can really come back. You can plan to come back. But, I mean, trying to focus down people who will offer you that extra shutdown gold is definitely the way to do it. And, uh, it unfortunately, is the hyper carries of the game. <laughs> the Callista and the LeBlanc. So, uh, we'll see what they're able to make happen here on this red side. But some good farming there from Tristana. Uh, just as a side to note there, using that AoE explosion to get some good wave clear. Um, definitely something that Tristana did not have before, so having a little bit more wave clear is going to be uh, definitely a boon for her. Rumble actually taking out two-thirds of his health before you can even react from the flag and drag CC. Going to be going down there. And it's it's just not safe to even farm your lanes. Like, that was not past where even the inner turret should be. But absolutely just 100 zeroed out there by J4. And there's not much you can do about that. And with the jumping in there of the Cataclysm combo, actually great sidestep on the Q there from Morgana. Going to try and turn his attention over to Annie with the Chilling Smite. But no, that will be J4 going down by trying to knock this Maokai under the turret. And does get a turret shot in for trouble, but... Um, taking down uh, almost two-thirds of her health as well. Uh, probably not going to be an exchange she'll win against a Maokai even at this point. With that rod, I believe that rod is fully stacked at this point. Nearly fully stacked. Um, just two more minutes till that rod is absolute value town. And we see the Maokai able to finish off that top lane turret now. Um, that he was left alone since Vi did have to go back Gonna try and be a pest here. Just a single auto. <laughs> Good play there from Vi. Trying to delay. I mean, doing what you can. Like, that buys you an extra few seconds here. Forcing Maokai to hang around uh, when he doesn't want to farm out an extra wave that might not be in the plan that uh, the team was communicating amongst themselves. We'll see how this plays out. I mean, if you continue to try and do stuff like that, it's gonna pay dividends at some point. But the question is, whether or not those dividends uh, are hefty enough to uh, make a large difference at this point. And we see Callista actually opting to uh, forego the uh, Runon's Hurricane here uh, for the uh, Infinity Edge Blade of the Rune King combo here. Just a lot of damage coming out of her. Um, and it looks like she will continue to not go for that, possibly um, for some sort of Static Shiv um, Maybe Phantom Dancer as well. Uh, coming out as their next item. So an interesting build from this Callista. Not trying to make use out of uh, that passive rend. Going to just go for raw damage. And perhaps a wise decision given that uh, as something that's a little off meta right now. is not something people are used to playing against. So, uh, I mean, obviously it appears to be working out for this <laughs> Callista. Um, but yeah, when you're this far ahead, it's definitely... Uh, I, a good investment to get that extra damage in to make sure uh, any armor that's coming out is gonna essentially be nullified just by that raw extra damage and as we look around we don't see any extra damage coming out we do see or any armor coming out we see that uh, Seeker's Arm Guard uh, brought out for this Morgana here um, who is 0-1-3 not doing too bad herself but not gonna be able um, to do much in this game uh, Assuming that this Baron does go down here. We've seen Callista getting quite a bit of stacks into there. And with the red side so far away being held back into their base by this Maokai, by this LeBlanc. I mean, they dare not even venture out into what is essentially blue side's jungle here. This is, looking at the minimap, this is a blue side's vision. Absolutely disgusting vision control. And the red side, they can barely, I mean, look at that. You can barely get wards outside of the base wall. It's just... Just disgusting vision, vision control here. The blue side has put on a clinic this Microsoft One team has. And that will be, uh, I believe, the second, third dragon. Excuse me, of the game going over to this blue side here. Um, as we see, 
Uh, people trying to rotate around. Malachi, being a split pusher, <laughs> I mean, with that Baron uh, uh, power that he can give to these minions here, and just wave clearing himself to clear the path for those Baron up minions, he's able to split push in this way. And actually, let's jump around. I'm focusing too much here, arguably, on that Malachi. And I missed in a blink this really squishy Morgana going with that Seeker's Arm Guard does not have any resistances aside from some armor and stepped just a little bit too forward. That's an easy one-two combo there from this LeBlanc. And J4 looking for more, but actually going to uh, back away here after taking a little bit of that turret laser and seeing um, that Vi was able to back away. Great equalizer there, zoning people off that turret. Unfortunately, the turret's still going down. That, turret, that little rain cloud going to proc the passive on that... Uh, item for this buy but in the meantime just annihilated like the amount of overkill on the damage to those champions just now was ah oh, just too much and this could be it here with those three champions now down only Vi and Morgana up Morgana does not have any way to try and uh, get that ultimate proc off in the pile on to Vi uh, gonna be too much there she goes I mean the flash in she will actually get the proc off but the Surrender gonna come in before she can get blown all the way up there. So that will be the game. Going over to this Microsoft One team, an absolute clinic put on by them. Um, as we move over to the end of the game stats here, taking a look at the score. Of course, I mean, absolutely the story of the game is that 8-0-5 uh, LeBlanc pairing with the uh, 7, 1, and 3 Callista. Just horrid amounts of damage. <laughs> As somebody who enjoys watching both of those champions, that was, uh, that was gross. I feel dirty. I gotta take a shower after this now. That was uh, insane. And we even saw they were so far ahead that J4 opted to not transition into tank, got a Hydra, got a Hex Drinker. I mean, a little bit of resistance. No actual... Uh, Raw health aside from this ruby crystal, a single ruby crystal, and he was able to get away with it. Five, three, and five. I mean, when you're able to go raw damage as J4 and not give up any kills like that, I why do anything else? Um, looking over here at the statistics overall for the match out LeBlanc, 16,000, nearly 17,000 damage, more than any two members on this. Uh, Almost more than any two members, if you do combine these two, but almost more than any two members on the entire red team combined. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, this is a, a good match to build off of. If anyone goes up against Microsoft One in the future, you get rid of that Callista, you get rid of that LeBlanc. Those are obviously high priority bands going forward, and... If you don't, you certainly got to be first picking them away because this is, if you allow these champs to get picked out again, uh, that's just not going to be um, something that's very favorable for you um, if you put them on what appear to be at least comfort champions now, especially after the way this match has gone. I'm sure those are going to be considered comfort champions amongst the Microsoft One team. So, um, Without further ado, that is the entire game uh, for the day. That's the last game for the day. Uh, thank you for everyone watching the stream, watching the uploads. I hope you enjoyed this match. That is, again, Microsoft 1 ONE taking picking up the win over this Amazon Amazon team here. Uh, if you want to stay tuned in with the After Hours Gaming League, of course, go to their website. The schedule is posted there. The videos will be uploaded there. And if you want to stay in touch with specifically all the videos uh, or all the matches I am casting for, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, stay tuned to my channel. I will be uploading the videos of all the games I cast, and I will be doing from this week forward, given how successfully I was able to not crash my computer, <laughs> I will be doing streams um, of these events live as I cast. So... Uh, for any of you interested, please stay tuned, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show. Have a good rest of your evening.